When it comes to managing your cows for the year, some of your highest costs will be during the winter time period and that'll be both what you feed as well as how you feed it. So typically uh, the traditional method of feeding your cows is in the yard behind your barn or in pens in your yard using round hay bales and that can be likely the most costly method to overwinter your cows. It can range somewhere in the range of two dollars plus per cow per day and if you do the math if you had 100 cows 180 days of winter feeding that ramps up over our $35,000 a year. So Western Beef likes to do work on winter feeding methods with their cows uh, doing things in field systems or extensive systems. Uh, they can be lower cost methods, you're not starting your tractor as much, and they can end up putting the manure out here in the field rather than leaving it in the yard, which then requires additional equipment or hiring of custom operators to move that manure out to the yard and out to the field setting. Crop residue grazing, so the grazing of the straw and chaff left over uh, mature crop is combined, is one method to overwinter your cows and uh, it involves either having a mixed farming operation, so you have grain uh, acres on your property or cooperating with a next door neighbour who is, uh, does annual cropping. So we want to talk today about grazing crop residues with beef cows and really taking the opportunity to utilize the ruminant digestive system. This is really talking about the partnership between the livestock and cropping industries and utilizing these byproducts of growing small grain cereal crops. If we look at the nutritive value of most chaff and straw chaff, different small grain cereal crops, the nutrient requirements of pregnant beef cows, 7% crude protein, are not being met, with the exception of pea straw chaff. So we do need to step in with an energy or protein supplementation. So when we're grazing crop residues in field paddocks, it's really important to have natural shelter belts. If you don't have natural shelter belts, make sure there's part of a wind breaks out here. Provision of water, winter watering systems is important as well. There is some opportunity to snow graze. If you're snow grazing, make sure that snow depth is adequate and soft and fluffy so those cows can get adequate water source. When we're winter grazing cows, ensure that these cows are coming into good body condition. And so the objective of winter grazing, if it's looking at grazing residues, is to maintain that body condition. So maintaining that condition needs probably to step in there with an energy or protein supplement. You don't want to be feeding unproductive cows. Make sure you preg check, you're not feeding open cows. As well, it might take one or two winters for naive cows to get onto grazing residues as they have to learn that that's the feed source for their, for their grazing program. Wind protection is so, so important. Wind chill factor will ramp up energy demands of these cows, so adequate wind protection, including natural shelter belt or portable wind breaks. The bottom line is, ensure you know the nutritive value of those crop residues, so it's very important to take a feed test and find out that if you're deficient in energy and protein, to step in with that energy or protein supplement. Typically, residues are collected using wagons, boxes, hole bunchers, just to put these residues in piles of roughly 50 pounds each. So we conducted a study looking at grazing crop residues. The two crops included a pea and an oat crop. The pea was a 40-10 silage pea, where the crop was combined and the straw and chaff was collected in piles of 50 pounds. The oat was a baler oat, a smooth-owned oat, and that as well was collected in 50-pound piles of straw and chaff. The cows were put out there over three years, average of 60 to 100 days, and the results of that indicated that there was an issue in terms of those cows consuming the pea residue. There was a palatability preference issue. We saw those cows consuming less pea residue than oat residue. Performance-wise, the cows consuming the oat residue has a pot of body weight change, 56 pounds. The cows consuming a dry lot hay and the dry lot pens had a positive body weight change of 53 pounds, but the pea cows consuming those residues only had a positive body weight change of four, so there was that palatability preference issue. So as I mentioned, when cows are grazing residues from small grain cereal crops, there is a deficiency in energy and or protein. Some good supplements that might be considered include alfalfa hay, possibly barley grain or oat grain, or in fact, dry distiller's grains. When we're feeding dry distiller's grains, they're fantastic protein and energy supplements, but we do need to be aware that we're probably overfeeding protein and consider the fact that elevated phosphorus and sulfur. So make sure you have a good mineral program in front of those cows because that calcium phosphorus ratio needs to be at a two to one. Some of the benefits of grazing in field paddocks in the wintertime, including 
uh, utilization of manure nutrients, including deposition of nitrogen, phosphorus in the field so that manure nutrients are out there after the grazing program versus being in the dry lot pen and having to move that manure with equipment. As with all of our studies looking at extensive field feeding, we are monitoring how the cows are performing as well as their calves, but we also know that it's important for producers, in order for them to even consider changing a management practice, they want to know that there's going to be a cost savings involved. We're monitoring the number of hours spent out here, tracking labour use, equipment use, infrastructure, and comparing it to a, a typical dry lot pen feeding system. When I spoke earlier, I talked about how it was about $2 a day, a little over $2 per cow per day for feeding round hay bales in the yard. In a system like this with crop residue grazing, you can save around 30 to 40% on your winter feeding costs. It's not for your entire winter, for the 60 day period that these cows are out here though, it amounts to about $40 per cow savings. So if you had 100 cows, that's about $4,000 in savings and it's worth considering doing something like crop residue grazing.